Hi there, it's Kate Williams here from QUT and I'm really excited to be working with Sing and Grow in 2019 to conduct a world first study with you and your team. I'm a registered music therapist and I've had a long history with Sing and Grow. I worked full time on the management team from 2004 when the program was only based in Brisbane and I was the sole author on the grant that won from the federal government $1.8 million at that time to take the program national uh, from 2005. And I helped lead that expansion. I was uh, the person who contracted QUT as the initial evaluators of that national ex expansion. Um, and in total, I've I worked with Sing and Grow and Playgroup Queensland on staff for seven years before coming to QUT to do my master's, which was on Sing and Grow, and then my PhD, which was on a different topic. And now here I am a senior research fellow at QUT in the School of Early Childhood and Inclusive Education, and I'm still very interested in the ways that music can be used to support child development and parenting. So I'm completely delighted to be working with Sing and Grow again this year. And research is really important for Sing and Grow for lots of reasons. I mean, as therapists ourselves, we want to understand the impact of our work on our families. We want to know, in fact, if we're making a difference. And secondly, as a government funded program, um, Sing and Grow really needs to be able to demonstrate outcomes to the funders. And this will ensure that there's ongoing support sustained over time, which is important not just for the programs, but of course to the families who access this important service nationally. And we also really want to contribute to a broader global evidence base about what works um, for families and the benefits of, of this kind of program, which will have benefits for all sorts of uh, organisations and families across the world. So Sing and Grow, excitingly, is still the most evidence-based group music therapy program internationally. That's something that I'm proud of and I think you should be proud of too. And now it's time to be a part of the next step. So Sing and Grow have contracted me at, the, at QUT in the School of Early Childhood and Inclusive Education to conduct a new study commencing this year in Term 2. Uh, a study this large and rigorous has not been done with Sing and Grow families since the 2005 to 2008 national evaluation. The findings of that prior evaluation have really helped and been instrumental in sustaining the government funding and support for Sing and Grow for over a decade. Uh, as the theory about how and why the Sing and Grow program works sort of develops over time, it's really timely now to conduct a new study measuring more specific parent and child outcomes. Specifically, this 2019 study is interested in changes in parenting self-efficacy, responsiveness and home uses of music and changes in children's self-regulation skills. These are all really important aspects of Sing and Grow's theory of change. All families attending any group programs that last from six weeks to eight weeks long across term two and term three nationally in 2019 will be invited to participate. Uh, this study will use the same parent recruitment and data collection procedure as the prior large national study. This procedure worked really well, but it is entirely contingent on the goodwill and commitment of Sing and Grow staff, such as yourself working with families. You play such a vital role in this by explaining the study, collecting the parent consent and facilitating the completion and collection of the parent surveys. And your enthusiasm and commitment to the research, it will be seen and picked up on by parents and it will be part of the way that they make their decision as to whether or not to participate. So I'll explain in a lot more detail soon and you'll also receive a document, but in basically in sessions one and two, you will invite parents to participate and collect their time one data. And then in the final session of your program, you will collect their time two data. Uh, we really can't gain meaningful findings from the research without a really large group of parents participating and without as much complete pre and post data as possible. So your persistence in this process with every group and every single family in your group is so important to the whole study. And I thank you in advance for your support with this. 
So let's have a closer look at the procedure. Now, if you would prefer just to read through the procedure document that you will receive, you can stop the video now. Um, but if you'd like to keep listening, I'll just be talking through that document now. So it looks like this. and it's called the Sing and Grow Research Procedure Document. And it steps you through a number of steps that are chronologically in order. So when you're preparing for week one of your program, you'll receive uh, some paperwork, a paperwork pack for each group. And you'll have the time one parent packs uh, will be part of this pack. And what the parents get in this pack is the uh, QUT logo research information sheet, participant information sheet. It's a double-sided sheet and they can keep that. They get your usual uh, sing and grow information for families about collecting personal information. Again, they can keep that. The rest of the pack they need to give back to you and these will be printed on beige colored uh, paper to help uh, families and yourselves remember which ones come back and which ones stay with families. So they sign uh, the research consent form if they're willing to participate and they hand that back. There's the parent and child details, which is standard practice for Sing and Grow. And this is the research data collection tool, which is a parenting survey that goes for three pages. So those will be in your pack for time one. You will also get for the end of the program a time two pack, which is your standard feedback survey that you've always used in Sing and Grow, plus a repeat of the research parenting survey. You'll also get your typical group attendance record, the first page of your, um, of your booklet. You'll get this copy of the research procedure that I'm talking through right now. And you'll get three uh, reply paid envelopes because you'll need these uh, one to send back to your Sing and Grow offices and two to send back to QUT. And you'll also get some post-it notes and I'll explain what those are for soon. <clears throat> so as you're preparing for week one, you will need to pre-code the parent um, packs by inserting the state ID, the community ID, the Sing and Grow music therapist ID and the family ID and also circling time one uh, for the time one up here. Now there are multiple pages that you need to do this on and I'm, I'm sorry for that, but it's really important in case the pages get separated, we will still be able to um, track who, who these pages belong to. So if you just pre-code sequentially, even though you don't know who will be in your group yet, then they'll be ready to give out at the end of session one. And at the end of session one, you uh, need to provide a plain language uh, explanation for the research to the parents. They do have all the information they need on the written sheet, but it is a bit dense, it's two pages long. So I've written a script for you, but please do feel free to you know, adjust it to your own voice. And the script goes like this, thanks for coming to Sing and Grow. I'm really excited to get to work with you over the next few weeks. At Sing and Grow, we are interested in understanding how the program works or not for families. We need to be able to show the government that funds us what kind of impact our work is having. And it's really important so that we can keep getting funding and keep working with families. So at the moment, we're doing some research with QUT and we'd love for you to help us out by participating. In this pack that I'm going to give you, you'll find more information and some forms to fill out. The parent and child details form is one that we must have for our records. So that's for all families. And that's to show the government that we are seeing families, in fact. Um, but if you consent to the research, we'll also share this parent-child details information with QUT, but they will not be recording uh, your name or contact information. Uh, the other forms in the pack are part of the, the QUT research and are optional for you, but it would be really great if you'd be willing to complete them. They ask about your child and you as a parent, and we would ask the same questions of you at the end of the program because we're interested in change over time. All of your informa information will be kept confidential confidential and QUT will not be storing your names or contact details in any way. I will not be reading your responses as your music therapist will be placing them together today directly in an envelope to QUT. If you come across a question you don't want to answer, you can leave it blank. So if you're willing to help, could you please sign the consent form and complete the survey? You'll see the survey has scales. You just need to circle the response that's most like you. Just make sure you check the categories up the top of the page 
and there are three pages to complete. And uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'm happy to play with the children while you complete this. We really appreciate it. So in summary, the white pages are yours to keep parents and the beige ones we would like back. So that's the script. It sounds a bit long. You might be able to find ways to shorten it. But what's really important is that you can convey your enthusiasm, your warmth and your encouragement for families to do this. We will lose too much data uh, already from families who leave programs early. We know that that's going to happen. So we need to be really active in encouraging the families that we do have there um, to engage from the beginning, of course, without using any pressure or, or coercion. So after the explaining, you'll hand out the pre-coded packs and help supervise the children's while the parents complete. Now, if parents ask for your help, you can read the question to them and point out um, what the numbers or the responses mean in terms of strongly agree to disagree. And if they still say, I don't understand, you could say perhaps leave that one if you're more comfortable. Um, then you'll collect back for each family the research consent form, the Sing and Grow Parent and Child Details form and the Parenting Survey. You'll have the QT form, so the consent form and the, the Parenting Survey go straight into an envelope that the parents can see that you're putting it in. Parent Child Details form you will keep with you as usual. Um, you then, after the session, transfer the family names and codes to your group attendance record, making sure you've got the correct family assigned to the correct code. And please place a star or an asterisk next to the family names on the group attendance record to show which ones have consented to be part of the research. Now, if you're in a group where parents don't, you, you feel parents don't have enough English to really provide informed consent for the research, then um, or to complete the parent surveys, then you can, you know, not not request this of them. But please do discuss it with your state manager, um, perhaps as you're making this decision to support you. So at the end of, that's the end of session one, done and dusted. At the end of session two, we would like you to repeat the above procedure for any new families that have joined um, with you. And if there were families who weren't quite sure about whether they'd participate in session one, you could check in with them. I mean, if they've said no thanks, then that's fine, just leave them. But if they weren't sure and wanted time to think about it, you could check in with them. Um, make sure you're um, marking all parent-child detail forms also with an asterisk in the top right for those who've consented to participate because that way Sing and Grow will know which ones to share with QT. And at the end of session two, you'll post the QUT envelopes with all QUT time one surveys, the parenting surveys and the consent forms. So we're not going to recruit any new participants who arrive from week three onwards into the QUT um, part of the research. You will just continue to do your usual sing and grow processes with them. You will collect your attendance data on the group record form as you usually would. Um, now, as you're preparing for the end of the program, uh, you need to pre-code the time to family packs and, and remember they have the Sing and Grow feedback form and also a repeat of the QT parenting survey. So pre-code all pages with the family IDs, IDs and we're using uh, post-it notes with the name of the family on top of of those sets of paperwork so that you know who to hand them out to and you can take off those post-it notes as you go. Again, place an asterisk, please, in the top right corner of the parent feedback surveys for those families who've consented to participate in the QT research. Again, so Sing and Grow knows which forms to share with QT. So at the end of the second last session, whether that be week five or week seven for your group, please ask if any families know that they won't be there for the final session next week, and then you can run the final session um, of, of data collection process with them. At the end of the last session, what this process looks like is, of course, thanking families for coming, celebrating their successes, remind them about the research and that we need to collect similar information at the end of the program as the beginning to show change over time. Remind them that all information is confidential, they can skip any questions they like, and that you will not be reading anything other than the feedback form so that the parenting survey only goes to QUT. Explain that the simple parent feedback form for Sing and Grow is for all families, even if they didn't join the research, plus there's the additional parenting survey for those that have joined the research project. Um, for those that consented to the research, the, uh, remind uh, families that the parent feedback will also be shared with QUT, but once again, we won't be recording any names or contact details.
So you hand out the pre-coded parent packs, taking the, the named post-it notes off as you go. For families not in the research, this will just be the feedback form. So any families that arrived from week three onwards or who chose not to consent, it will only be the feedback form. Um, for others, it will be the feedback form plus the parenting survey. So collect those, again, putting the QUT surveys in the second QUT envelope and keeping the uh, Sing and Grow feedback forms with you. So, and once the end the, this is complete and the program's completely finished, post the QUT those time two parent surveys in the envelopes back to QT, please. You will then collate the parent child details form, the Sing and Grow parent feedback surveys and community record booklet and post it to Sing and Grow for data entry as usual. Just making sure that on all um, materials that belong to families that consented to the research that there is an asterisk in the top right and also there's an asterisk next to them on the group record form. Um, and so that's the end of the process. And please feel free to contact me on k15.williams at qut.edu.au if I can help with any questions. And thank you so much for being part of this exciting process. I'm really looking forward to working with you.